Good morning, gardeners. Lindsay here with the Mindful Living Movement. I'm going to take you on a early morning June garden tour, and we are actually following a pretty decent little rainstorm overnight, so everything in the garden has just perked up and is beautiful and green. Now, I'd like to say that I have had my garden planted for a little while, given that it is late June already, but that's actually not the case. We've had a late start to the spring. Um, and in some cases, it's actually worked out really well. And then in other ways, things grew way too big indoors and in my greenhouse before they got planted in the garden. So they've kind of had a bit of a hard time um, getting themselves situated. So I will show you what is working fantastic, what is looking a little rough, um, the good, the bad, and everything in between. But I have to say before we dive in that maybe presumptuous, big statement, but I think this might be my favorite garden I've planted ever in this space. And I think it's due to the simplicity that I have kept within it. So let's take a look and see what's happening. Alrighty, so this bed that you can see behind me here was one of my low tunnels um, that you can see in my first garden tour of the season. And so I did have carrots, garlic, um, onions, some um, romaine lettuce, um, beets, and a bunch of other things planted in this space. So a lot of them are looking really good. I'll give you a close up of that. My garlic actually did terribly. It I think I only got maybe like five that actually sprouted, um, but this was where a lot of snow gets piled. And I think that with all the snow melt from the crazy amount of snow we had, I think they may have rotted. So that's okay. Good lesson to learn. I may not stick my garlic in this little patch anymore. And this fun little sort of trellis thing here my husband built me last summer, I am putting to good use again this summer for a trellising. Not tomatoes this time, but I'm going to be going with cucumbers and also some squash and those were a few things that I had mentioned got a little bit too big inside um, in the process of untangling them and trying to plant them I think I murdered about eight different cucumbers so I did have to go to a greenhouse and manage to find some that were pretty teeny tiny and easy to transplant and they're kind of have picked up um, thankfully where my other ones have left off so let's take a close look all right, so as you can see, there's a couple of garlic and there's actually some random garlic that sprouted in weird other places that was not planned, but this was supposed to be the garlic patch. And I decided about a week ago that it was definitely not going to be sprouting. I gave it as much time as I thought would be good. And then I have reseeded this with carrots. Now this is a little thing called Fasolia, which self seeds. It's got these be beautiful blue flowers and it's definitely seeded quite a lot. So I'll probably thin that a little bit, um, but I've kind of liked to let it just sort of do its thing on that corner. There are those onions. These I started from seed indoors in the winter. Beets, these were transplanted out using my soil blocks. Same thing with the romaine and one thing about lettuce is it loves these cool springs, so it's actually looking pretty sweet. I'm excited about that, almost ready to harvest. Lots more onions. Some carrots that I had direct sown into my low tunnel, and it was just too cool. They really didn't germinate well, so I've actually sort of added in a few more seeds there. And then we get to my favorite patch. So in here, I'm actually doing a bit of a kind of three sisters method here. So I've got a lot of cucumbers, but then also pole beans. So this whole little patch, once these guys get just a little bit bigger, I'm going to be trellising them using a string line all the way up to this. So as you can see, some of these beans are just looking beautiful. These were the cucumbers that I purchased. And then we have some of the bigger cucumbers that I transplanted. They kind of had a hard time though. <laughs> They're a little rough looking like this guy. He really didn't take too kindly to being transplanted, but he's doing okay. And then I have radish here. So these were seeded into the low tunnel and these are daikon radishes. So they actually get really big. So that is not full grown yet. I'm gonna give it just a little bit yet before I harvest. And then I've interplanted some cucumbers because these radish are gonna get pulled in the very near future. And then I've got some succession planting. 
Now, one of the fun things that happens when you come off of a year of drought and you start to get a bunch of rain is a lot of your fruiting perennials just kind of go into overdrive thinking that they really need to start reproducing for lean years. So as you can see, my strawberries are just absolutely loaded with flowers. It's going to be pretty exciting um, in not too long when these are actually full of fruit. So Always my favorite patch in the garden is where the tomatoes get to live, the tomatoes and the peppers and my salsa garden, if you will. Now, I have about 15 tomato plants along the back here I'll give you a close look at. And I think I'm probably at somewhere about 30 pepper plants, um, like 10, 12 eggplants. So there's a lot going on in this area. I'll give you a, a close look at how I've interplanted and companion planted a bunch of different things. Um, but these guys, they're, they don't look like they just got planted, but they pretty much did. They got humongous growing indoors, but I just refused to bring them outside when the temperatures were still dropping down to like five degrees Celsius at night. Um, tomato just does not like that. And I sort of was hedging my bets that keeping them in pots longer would be less stress than moving them outside into the cold. So I think it worked out. I'll give you a close look at everybody. Uh, there were lots of things that fruit was even already starting to grow on and flowers and for the most part i don't see anything that's even really skipped a beat so let's have a close look so along the back here these are tomatillos and you can see they are already flowering and they have fruit starting some of these basically just were already like this in their pots it was kind of fun trying to keep them from tangling up. There's another mystery of a lot of mysteries. I didn't really label things very well, never do. Kind of one of my <laughs> issues. Um, what else do we have? A whole patch in the front here. These are ground cherries and they're a really fun little fruit. I'll show you once they get further along, but as you can see, they're just loaded right up. And a lot of these, they were pretty much like this when I transplanted them and they're just continuing on. I've got a bunch of eggplant in here. My first flower, which is very, very exciting. In the back here, I've got, I think, some cherry tomatoes. They're, they're okay. Some of these guys, this one was sort of flopped over, as you can see. Um, he kind of got a little tangled up and was wrapped around some other fruit, but I managed to straighten him out and it looks like he's continuing on with life. So here is peppers. And a lot of these were the peppers that I was growing indoors all winter long that I've transplanted out. And I'm actually fairly surprised. They're actually looking real good. This one in the front here is the only one that is kind of not super sure about himself. Um, being as they were in pots for the whole life up to this point and they were already producing and it was a bit of a risk transplanting them outside. So we'll see how they do overall producing now that I've moved them. My basil, I started lots and lots and lots of basil. I'm really keen to get some pesto going. Bunch of herbs and you can see elm seeds everywhere, which is just one of those things I get to deal with. And unfortunately it is raining and dropping elm seeds, which means a lot of these are going to sprout. So I'm gonna really have my work cut out for me dealing with weeds this spring. Oftentimes when it's dry, I can just leaf blower them out of the garden. Now I had to buy a bunch more pepper plants because I somehow miscalculated horribly on the amount that I needed. So. A lot of these I managed to find and because I was late planting, I actually got a pretty good sale. They were almost half price when I purchased them from a greenhouse, which is a real nice surprise considering I had to buy about 15 more. There's a bunch more basil. So that's a little look at my string line trellis. I'll give you some more details later on on how I built that. So I'm doing something a little bit differently in this patch. As you can see, I have um, row cover fabric over top of this. I have a bunch of brassicas underneath here, i.e. prone to bugs. So you do need to keep row cover on, fabric on it um, unless you wanna be spraying, which I most definitely do not. Now I opted to stick the fabric 
underneath my hoops and I did have it clipped onto a few of the hoops. Um, the wind keeps knocking them all but this one down. And I've decided to sort of go this route, which is a little bit odd as opposed to using the hoops to keep the fabric up and away um, because of our wind. So my thoughts are is that I can lift it up when it's not windy, it hangs out. And when it's really super windy, it kind of just like pulls it out of the clips and drops it onto the plants instead of ripping the whole thing up and off of my plants entirely, which tends to happen a lot throughout the season otherwise. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, so far, so good. We've had a couple pretty good winds and the theory stands. However, I am actually haven't opened this up yet since I put the fabric on it and we've had a couple good winds. So we'll see how the plants are doing. Maybe they've been battered by the fabric, I'm not sure. But I do know that I have a big harvest ahead of me today. So I'll share with you what everything looks like once I uncover it. And I've got a lot of, I think, spinach, kale, and I'm not sure, maybe some shard as well underneath there that needs to be harvested. So here is a look at what's happening. This is peas. On the outside there, they don't need to be covered, so I haven't. And then these are sort of what's going on with those, the metal ribs that I use for my low tunnel. I do have lower ones as well that are poly, but they're just so bouncy. I don't really like them very much. We've got some more onions, some peas that didn't germinate super great, but I've added some more there. And then I have underneath here sort of half covered our turnips and I really only half covered them um, to keep some flea beetles off. I want to sort of just do a little test and see, see how it goes. Um, but thankfully flea beetles have not been bad this year. So my front yard I use largely for perennials, but I do also get sneaky with putting other just annual vegetable type crops up front here. I have a good sunny patch along the front here and I have used it for corn again, corn and beans. Now I'll give you a closer look at these guys, but they're a little rough. <laughs> I did not have a strong enough fan on them indoors inside before I brought them out and we didn't even have that strong of a wind it was just you know decent wind and it kind of busted a few of them and then of course this spot here is a little bit exposed so they're not looking too great however I think they're still okay and I don't see any that have actually croaked fully yet so um, it'll be a real big gamble as to whether I actually get to harvest any corn this year so we shall see so you can see a lot of them are kind of bust over on the top some it's just leaves that are broken so yeah it'll be very interesting I'm curious to see um, I've had corn get battered by wind in past years and it actually still came out fine so I'm like semi-optimistic but it's a little bit too early for them to look this way so we will see this little section is most definitely one of my favorites it's perennials with those gorgeous purple irises that are in bloom right now got some succulents, some grasses. I've added in some petunias so that I do get to keep that purple. And then my oregano. This little patch here I did not think was going to come back. So we've got a bunch of oregano, got some sage, there's actually some thyme here that 
don't often make it through our winter, but this year they did. And so I'm going to have a lot of oregano, which is very exciting. And my rhubarb are ready for harvesting right now. They're still on the smaller side of things. These plants were rescues from my grandma's that were sort of hiding behind a shed. Um, but they're getting pretty close to being almost full size. This one in the back here is getting pretty big. So I'm excited to do some harvesting of that and get to make some rhubarb crisp. More irises. These yellow irises are just the coolest ever. I love that color pattern. And they're about halfway through blooming, which is always fun. Now this little patch is probably not going to work out. I had a bunch of soil blocks of bok choy and spinach started that I pretty much forgot about and then just as a we'll see what happens I threw them in the front here I get kind of part shade it doesn't look like they're doing very well the little spinach have bolted on a couple of them um, the pop choy might actually some of these might actually work out it looks like they're bouncing back but the flea beetles have found some of the smaller leaves so and I'm not going to cover these I'm just going to Kind of let them do their thing we've had a wet enough spring and the flea beetles aren't usually too keen on that so we'll see and then more lilies be a bit before they flower this is my shade garden which is getting better and better every year lots of hostas really filling out i've got coleus that i sprinkle in which are annuals and i Actually, I'm doing a bit of an experiment with some house plants that I have propagated just to bring in some extra color. And then these are pumpkins. I've got some pumpkins scattered around that I don't actually think are going to do very well. I think we've got too much shade here. This giant sedum is just at the end of flowering and I think it's going to get divided because it's actually it looks like it's starting to sort of choke itself out and die in the middle here. The chicks and hens always doing amazing without any extra attention. And my strawberry patch, my newest strawberry patch that actually has fruit already despite how small the plants are and another little section of my shade garden we got the ferns the hostas some coleus in there some purple waffle which is an annual from inside looking pretty good now this mess of grass i think needs to get divided this is some carl forrester grass which gets really tall some fire grass in the center some sunflowers scattered around my peonies just starting to show some flower heads starting and then i had a bunch of extra tomatillos so i have trellis them along the back here now, I don't know for sure if this is going to work out. It should. I get a ton of heat and sun here. Whether the grass shades it out or not is going to be kind of the million dollar question. Well, that caps off my spring garden tour. And as you can see, I have just finished planting a bunch of stuff, but I'm also harvesting a whole bunch of things at the same time, which is kind of cool when you really stretch out and sort of stagger your planting and you really take advantage of season extension opportunities. Um, I planted a little bit later than I normally would into like late April. Usually I plant, try to plant early April, but this year was a bit later still harvesting a whole bunch of things so try to stretch out your season whenever you can and you know we do our best catering to the weather as you saw some things worked out keeping it indoors longer some things not so much so it's always a gamble <laughs> now i hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your day and we will see you again soon gardeners